okay, so another question I get asked quite a lot is like the, uh, what we call the, the sucker punch. And from an Aikido perspective, is it, is it possible to apply the principles and, and deal with, with, deal with the, the sucker punch? In a lot of cases, it's, it's, it's about awareness as it always is. And when you walk down the street, aware of your surroundings and aware of the people walk past you and, and how you use your vision and your peripheral vision. Um, but just to look at the technique or the principle behind maybe take uh, controlling or, or being able to deal with the, the sucker punch. So just to look at, it, at, at a punch, when you're square up, you need to really control both arms as we did in previous videos. But just to look at the principle first before we go to the sucker punch, because the sucker punch is generally taken, is gen you're generally attacked from the side where they think that you can't see them as they walk past you. But just to look, if he just throws a, a, a nice big punch at me here, I'm going to go both hands onto one side. And I'm moving purposely away all the way to this side to get away from the other hand. So I'm moving all the way over here straight away. So previous video, we would have went in and regardless of what hand is punching, I control both hands at the same time. And just for the principle of the sucker punch, I'm going to come in. And you can see this is very similar to uh, Yoko Minuchi, the way we might enter for Yoko Minuchi. So you can see where the hands are pretty much the same, but I'm entering right in and I'm going to do the same wrap around the tricep with the, the lower hand. The upper hand is going to wrap around the shoulder. And a little thing to notice, which is a big thing, is my forearm and elbow are coming across down into the center of his chest. And this is important because I want to, when I want to take him down, I'm going to go back into his center. So it's this motion. So both hands are going to do that motion. But if you look at the chest here, if I push down into that chest, you can see where that... And we do a lot of exercises where we work with this type of motion but I'm doing that with the forearm and the elbow. So it's just important to know where the hands are going as I do that. So I'm gonna step out to this side. And when I get to here, you can see where the point is very difficult now to, to, to touch me even with that, with that fist. So try and punch through, try and touch me. There's a lot of force. So you can see where again, I'm staying connected with that. But this, this very much, you're going straight through and then you're, you're working with the principle of staying centered, staying aligned working back into his center, the weights underneath the hands, all those principles that we work with. And I'm going down all the way to the ground. And again, we can control here and do our usual turn over to face down. So we'll just look at that one more time, just from that angle. And then we'll look at it from the sucker punch angle. So I'm here. So the, the principle is, 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 is very important that we get this, this principle. We go through the center. So if we look at Katate Tori and the, our basic Kokinage where we go through and we come to this, this exercise. So we, know we have a lot of difficulty with this exercise. Like if he stays very strong for me or if I'm up on top and my shoulders are rolled, rolled up and forward, it's not possible for me to to take him down or to go into his center because everything's from the top. So I need to get down into my center, roll my shoulders back, and then connect through his center to bring him down. So we're, we're just using that principle. So with the punch, it comes in, and that's the same principle, speed it up. Okay, so looking at it now from the sucker punch angle, so typically, as he walks past me, and if he stops here, I can still see him, okay? I'm looking straight ahead. But if he takes a little bit of a step forward now, he's gone. I can't see him anymore. And this is where the sucker punch generally happens. If he turns at that point, he will strike me across the jaw. Bang. And that's a typical sucker punch. So from an awareness point of view and to use my peripheral vision, if someone's walking past me, and I don't feel good about what I'm feeling from the person or persons as they walk past, I use my eyes and I look to the side. So 
even without turning my head, just by turning my eyes, or I can pretend I'm looking at across the road, I can see him. So this gives me, this gives me the opportunity to take care of that blind side. And when the punch comes in, so as he comes in, the punch comes in, I enter into that space, the same as I showed previously. Okay, so here, as I walk past here, So this is one answer to, to the sucker punch. So slow it down here as it comes in. I need to bring my hands up. Okay, so it needs to come in. Even if I take a little bit of it, I need to make sure my hands are there and I take this face most, or if possible, all of the impact. Uh, just one more time here. The other way, which is probably not so common, is as I walk, because it's not that easy for him to do it this way, but as I walk past him, he hits me with this arm. Yeah. So to do this though, he has to kind of stay in front of me a little bit. This can typically happen if I was dealing with two people. The person that was in front of me is the person that I'm engaging with verbally. There could be insults flying or he could be threatening me in some way. But his friend is here or maybe is hovering around that area and he walks in and he takes it from that angle. This is difficult to deal with. So I have to be very aware of when I'm here, again, paying attention and paying attention to my environment, the people around me. Just because I'm dealing with this person doesn't mean there's somebody else coming from a different angle. But if he comes in from this side, I need to really come up so I'm really bringing my hands up to my, around my face and my head and protecting myself. As they come up, they, they come back down in the same motion. So as I say, I'm here, punch comes in. So I really have to make sure that I come up. So that's why if you're, if you're engaged in even a, a, verbal, a verbal conflict and you, you may turn or may escalate to, to something violent, then make sure that you're, you're, you're using your hands, you're talking with your hands, your hands are here centering your chest, you can rest them one on top of the other, you can have the hands here, or just simply talk with your hands and the sucker punch comes in from the side. My hands are already up, so this is the best option. Coming from here is I've been taken by surprise and I may or may not get there on time. But because of our, our basic cocking movement that we do in Aikido all the time. We, we're used to doing this. We're quite fast at it. It's not a, an unusual motion for us to come up and in. So we may be okay. But I, I think maybe okay isn't good enough. <laughs> so when I'm in this situation, I'm talking, I'm in a good stand, I'm in a good position, in a good ham knee. And if the sucker punch comes in, I'm here. Well, I need to have the hands in this position. Doesn't matter what leg is forward, I maybe I'll step forward into it. But wrap, wrap. Because if I'm a little bit late and he tries to pull back for another one, I need to be aware that the other hand may come through as well. Okay, so there, there are three options for the sucker punch and what may or what, what could happen. Okay, and just remember to be aware of your surroundings and use your peripheral vision.